the door opens from the clean room to the hallway, and we literally hear light footsteps, right? And then the door closes. And I'm watching it. I'm like, he's here, and like I'm looking at the door, and it opens, closes, we hear the footsteps. And they both kind of like look behind them, and she's like, oh, who's here? And I'm like, all the doors are locked, dude. It's just the three of us. And she's like, no, but the door just heard somebody walking around. And she stands up and like looks into the hallway, and the door opens again and slams shut. And she just like sits back down, like all white face, and I'm like, that's just Jack. <laughs> and she's just like, and I'm like, you can, you can go if you want to. <laughs> but that was the only time it ever happened in front of a client that I can remember. That was it. Well, that I that I know of, that I can think of. Your bat. Oh, oh, with a bat too. Uh, another time I'm tattooing a fucking mummified bat on Alyssa, and my bat skeleton that's up on the shelf, not being touched by anybody, it's, it's a fucking floating shelf, like, I can't bump into that shit, and I'm, like, 20 minutes into the tattoo, and it just, like, like, falls on the floor and shatters, you and, like, that day, right? Stevie was here, she was, was here, and she's like, what the fuck, and there, there wasn't even, like, a truck drove by, like, nothing fucking happened, and Alyssa was like, oh my god, and CB comes over to, like, start sweeping it up, she's like, there's no saving this, there's just, like, powder on the ground, there's no, there's no, not even, like, a bone left, right, it's just, like, dust, and I'm like, at least it happened while I was tattooing a mummified bat, because if I was tattooing an elephant right now, this would just be tragic, this is, like, at least a good story, you know, but, yeah, that, that, that's my two, my two good Jack stories, I think. It was, a, it was just early, early. Way early. We had CDs where? Back here? Yeah, they were like right by where the Thermofax was. Or is. Yeah. Right in that area. We were tattooing, right? And yeah. then just like... Yeah, we were tattooing and the fucking CDs just went... Like someone just... Huh. The weirdest I one that I that. remember... Because there's been like lots of little stuff, like footsteps, doors. Um, but do you remember when you... You had spent all night on your Star Wars painting. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he finished that painting up, and he's like, and he framed her, and he was trying to find a place to hang her. Oh, that's right. That and was he so was like, oh, I'm so fucking tired. I'm just gonna do this tomorrow. And we went upstairs and went to bed. And we come downstairs, and he's like looking around the shop. And he's like, where the fuck is my painting? Where the fuck is my painting? And he's like, I just framed it. Like, where is it? And it was hanging on one of these pillars. On a wall, <laughs> and no one had been here. Like Kyle had pulled his work yet. Nobody was here yet. And we we're like, so uh, that reminds me of the other one. <laughs> That's fucking. So Do you remember? Funny. It was just like three or four months ago, and I don't really actually. Remember. There was like an extra reason why it was spooky, and I don't remember what it was. But I think we were talking about Roy, or or there was something about it. Do you remember this? I don't know. Keep going. <laughs> I don't. I don't remember what was happening during the day, but there was definitely something having to do with talking about Roy. And uh, everybody's gone, I'm here by myself, I'm counting down the drawer, and I hear a loud noise, and I look over, and the picture of Roy and the one next to it are diagonal. And I sent you guys a picture oh, of it. Yeah, oh, yeah. You, yeah. And I was like, what the fucking shit? For real? <laughs> it, like, they just both tilted. Roy! The very first time I... I began my project was when I had gone out there to essentially photograph you all and I didn't and I didn't even have anything in my mind about Chinatown until it arose on that trip. Mm -hmm. And then I made five trips after I think it was five trips in total or five trips after that initial visit. And I think that I stayed, you know, that first trip I did not stay in the studio, I stayed over at Winston. Mm -hmm. But but I did stay in the studio on all the other trips, and I think it probably added up to, you know, the better part of 20 some odd days. And maybe yeah. more pertinently, 20 some odd nights. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and just to kind of, you know, and I don't know if I need, am I good to go here for five, ten minutes? Yeah, go ahead. Tell me what happened. What? Um, so, when I, and when I, 
all those trips were really based around the work I was doing in Chinatown, which, you know, is photography related, and you don't really know me that well, but you probably as well or better than anybody else in the shop can probably attest to because at that point, you know, you were still more of an apprentice and you were coming in early mm-hmm. and blah, blah, blah. You know, other than firecracker paper, I'd like to think I didn't leave much evidence of myself. I, I tried to be very specific where I put my things and very organized and you know how it is like with your tools as, a, as an artist yourself, everything goes in its place. Right. And, you know, after major shoots, you know, I'm talking just back over my career where I would be doing major setups for shoots. You know, people want to lend a hand at the end of a shoot when they help you put things away. It's like, don't touch anything. Thank you very much, but I need to be the one to put things away. Right. And this is all preface going towards something. Um, so at night, you know, I'd be there alone, and I'd take out my sleeping stuff and, you know, my bag and stuff I had done from the day. And when I went to finally turn the lights out and would go to bed, you know, I didn't want to be waking up in the middle of the night. No, not, you know, that shop is not like a wide open basketball course. You know, I, I want to make sure I know what things are. Mm-hmm. I was very, very, very careful. And I'm somebody who's able to be very careful. This goes here, that goes there. You leave things exactly in the morning, everything's exactly. You pick your stuff off, you put it away for the day, and it gets out of there, and it doesn't even look like you were there. Um, so, blah, blah, blah. What I'm about to tell you about, I think, I, and this is the part, so did this happen three times, four times, five times? I don't think more than five times, at least three times out of 20 some odd nights. Mm-hmm. I would wake up, I would wake up in the morning and, you know, having left everything very precisely and on at least three occasions, at least three occasions, maybe as many as five, I would always put my shoes against the wall right next to each other. You know, Mm -hmm. boom, there they are against the wall. And that, by the way, is a very specific thing for me. That's how I leave my shoes at home. Mm -hmm. When When I go to, I've spent various parts of my life meditating at ashrams, and it's one of the funny things, you, the ante room to any meditation center, everybody's taken their shoes off, they are left. It's not like a pile of shoes. Everybody's very careful to put their shoes right next to each other in a very organized, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I can picture it for sure. It's, it's very specific. This is not something that I only would do when I was staying at you know, your studio. Mm-hmm. And then at least three occasions, maybe as many as five, I'd wake up in the morning, I'd go through my shoes, and they had been reversed. Whoa. The right shoe, the right shoe would be on the left side, and the left shoe would be on the right side. And the first time I saw that, it definitely got at me. When it was the week there. that we went to Denver to see Slim Cessna. Yeah. She was here alone. And she's like, I'm not allowed to be there when you're not there. And we're like, what are you talking about? And she said, yeah, since so that back door, she, she was like, yep. yeah, she said the door kept opening and closing. And she's like, yeah, I could hear someone like walk in 
and walk back out and walk in and walk back out. She's like, yeah, uh, next time there's a show. <laughs> will, will you guys be there, please? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was like, I'm not going to be at your shop. Alone. And then we stopped doing first Fridays. Yeah. yeah. What? Oh, Are the, the black shoji screen set up so that it was like art gallery up here, nobody gets to walk through the tattoo shop, and it was like she had like bottles of wine for anybody who came in, and she could just hear shit happening back there, but she couldn't see any, anything. Mm-hmm. And we so, were like, oh, that's Jack. All these stories seem to center around the clean room back there, it's right? True. When I was here alone before everyone got here, I did an ambient temperature reading of the whole Ooh. shop and the basement. And the clean room's about a degree colder than the rest of everywhere else. Ooh. Jack! <laughs> That's Jack's bedroom. That's true. During my apprenticeship, I had a weird thing happen. Um, it? It's when Chris used to work in this station right here. And he was tattooing a client, and I was standing basically where Radar is sitting right there. <laughs> watching Chris tattoo right where I'm sitting. And we were alone. It was oh, just yeah. Chris and your client and me watching. And... I felt like a breath on the back of my neck and like I heard my name whispered in my ear like someone was right there. Yeah. And I flipped around really fast to see if anyone was back there where we usually see weird shit and there was nobody. It was just us three. Mm -hmm. And that was fucking creepy. And that was (laughs) during my early days here, which usually seems like when stuff happens to people. It definitely seemed like it used to be, not so much anymore, but like it used to be in time we, we hired somebody new, they were like... Teased. Right. And yeah, now so weird. it doesn't seem like that anymore. Have you had anything to funny happen? Yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, like before, whenever I would stay here, yeah. um, there wasn't ever really anything crazy, crazy. Um, other than occasionally you'd hear footsteps, but it's easy to just be like, oh, that's somebody who lives right. in the building. Right. But it would be like, you know, 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. Just Right. So I can't, could never really like prove. What was going on? The door shut, ha- has like slammed shut many times, but it could be the wind. <laughs> yeah. you know the, all it, it could be stuff. a draft. Was I, it the white door that would shut or the bathroom door? Uh, I've seen both. Yeah. But, but more often. It is the always white back door. there, it seems. Yeah. So, so the weird part about that for me is that the draft is obviously like that window above the door never really closes, and then there's that window in the bathroom that's just a grate. So, yeah. we, get, like, a so we get a tunnel. There is a draft, yeah. It makes sense for the bathroom door to slam itself shut, but the white one, if we all know on, if you try... If the fan is on, it makes sense. But yeah, if it's not, but if it's not, and yeah. we all know how hard it is to actually get that thing to latch. You can't do it most of the time. And it has been shutting itself and latching quite frequently. Right. I am about to show you how this door doesn't like to close on its own. Lately, when the ghost has been closing it, it'll slam shut and be totally shut. Let me show you what kind of force that takes. Simply closing it, it won't shut all the way. And it takes quite a shove to actually get that to latch. It's been latching itself quite a lot frequently. Even when it opens, you have to physically pull it out of that door jam. And it will open and shut 